Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabe Garrison, owner of Backwoods Pursuit, and today we kicked off our huge cooler review. We've got 16 premium coolers here. We are gonna be testing these out over the next seven to 10 days or however long these coolers last. We're gonna bring in the data and the results on a lot of different testing points and bring you that information to help you decide if one of these coolers is gonna fit what you need if you're looking for a premium cooler. All right, now for the parameters of this test, we set up this 12 by 12 Kodiak canvas cabin tent. Uh, we did this because we wanted to have an equal amount of sunlight hitting the, 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 all the coolers. So we're not gonna have hot spots necessarily. It's gonna be pretty stable temperatures. So going into the tent, what we did is we put all the coolers by size, laid them out along the edge of the tent. Now for the actual testing of the coolers themselves, we went and picked up 700 pounds of ice and 800 pounds of water wheeled that all back here to the tent, started putting those in the coolers. And what we did is we did a two to one ratio of ice to water bottles. That way, that's according to the manufacturer recommended uh, ratio for optimizing the cooler performance. So we did that on all these coolers. So that's what we did there. Once we got all the ice and the water in the coolers, went ahead and put thermometers in each cooler in the same spot in each cooler drop those in there, and then we're gonna go ahead and track that over the course of the next week or 10 days, however long these cooler last. We're gonna check them four times a day and record those temperatures in relation to the outside temperature and the temperature inside the tent here. So we can see how long each of these last until they reach 40 degrees internal temperature, then 50 degrees internal temperature, as that's recommended for beverages, 40 degrees recommended for safe meat storage. And then finally, we're gonna to continue to record until each one of the coolers is just total water from the melted ice inside the cooler. Record all that data and bring that data to you in this review. All right, jumping right into day one, the internal temperatures in the tent here got up to 94.1 degrees, so nice and warm. Uh, the, all of the coolers here, as you'd imagine, stayed under that 40 degree mark, but we did have one, the Rugged Road 65, that went up to just above the 39 degree mark, so pushing towards that 40 degree cutoff. The low temperature here, surprising, was that Pelican 80 quart, that went down to 31.7, and the second lowest was the Bison 125 at 33.6 degrees. So some really, really low temperatures and one that pushed towards that 40 degree mark kind of surprisingly. Day number two saw the internal temperatures inside the tent here reach 99.1 degrees, so it got really, really warm in here. Now we had three coolers surprisingly go just above that 40 degree mark in the Pelican 50, the Arctic Ultralight 52, and the Rugged Road 60. Now they were just barely above that 40 degree mark, and if you remember, we are going to have, to have two readings in a row above the 41 degree mark to account for any potential variation in the thermometer. So none of those are removed from the test at this point, but it was interesting that they just went barely above that. Now on the low end, the, the Pelican 80 quart wheel led the way at 31.7 degrees for the low temperature, and the Bison 125 was, came in second place at 32.7 degrees. Day number three, we had our warmest day in the test here. It got to 99.6 degrees here in the tent. So extremely warm. The coolers were working really hard to keep those temperatures down. And we had our first cooler tap out two readings in a row over the 40 degree temperature, over the 41 degree temperature even, and that was the Rugged Road 65. We had that reading twice in a row at the noon reading and then again at the five o'clock reading. And so that one is officially tapped out as far as being under that 40 degree temperature mark. Now, all the others held under the 40 degree mark, except for that Pelican uh, 50 quart and the Arctic 52 ultralight. The Pelican went to 42 degrees and the Arctic went to 40.4, but not for two readings in a row, so those two still remain in the test. Now, the low temperature, again, that Pelican 80 quart wheeled red at 32.5 degrees for the lowest reading and the Bison 125 again at 32.7, so those two are neck and neck on the low end so far. 
Day four, we saw a bit of a cool down. It only got to 91.5 degrees here in the tent, so a little bit of a break for the coolers, but still quite warm. We did see, however, two more coolers tap out and go above that 40 degree mark, two readings in a row, those being the Pelican 50 and the Arctic 52 Ultralight. Now, all of the coolers except for six went above the 40 degree mark, and that being just a little bit above, not, not very much as 40.1, 40.2, and they didn't go above that two readings in a row, so that we, they're not tapped out, they're not uh, being removed from the review. But though the six that did stay below the 40 degree mark entirely are the Orca 80, the Yeti 75, the Pelican 80, the Blue 110, the Bison 125, and the Orca 140. Now the Rugged Road, interestingly, still had ice in it, but it went above that 50 degree mark at day 3.5. So that one's removed entirely as far as temperature readings, but it's not yet fully melted. The lowest temperature we saw was again, the Pelican 80 quart at 32.5 degrees and the Orca 80, the Blue 110 and the Bison 125, all tied for the second lowest temperature at 33.6. Day number five, we saw temperatures come down just a little bit more, still 90.1 degrees here in the tent, so plenty warm, but not quite as warm as the previous days. Interestingly, that Rugged Road 65 did completely melt at the noon check, so 4.25 days until ice melt on that particular cooler. We still have 13 coolers that haven't tapped out and gone over the 40 degree mark twice in a row. All of the internal temps though began to rise. You can see the average internal temperatures begin to rise on all the coolers, which was interesting, but kind of expected the farther you go into this review. The lowest temperatures had a little bit of flip here. The Yeti 75 had the lowest reading this time at 33.2 degrees and the Pelican 80 was the second lowest at 33.4. So just a two tenths difference there, but we did see a flip in the lowest recorded temperature. Day number six, we had a little bit warmer temperatures, went up to 95.1 here in the tent, and we had four coolers tap out today. Had four that went above that 40 degree mark, two readings in a row. Those being the Orion 65, the Orca 80, really surprising there because it had been one of the lower temperature readings, the Grizzly 75, and then surprisingly the Bison 75 because it had been a reading really low in its temperatures also. Now we also had four that melted out entirely, those being that Orca 80. And again, really, really interesting there because that had been doing really well, had ice in it, and then it went above the 40 degrees and melted in the same day. The Pelican 50, the Arctic 52 and the Grizzly 75 also completely melted out. So some surprising uh, coolers there that went to, to complete ice melt. So we now have only nine coolers left in the running. The ones that are left are the Blue 60, the Arctic 65, the Pelican 65, the Pelican 80, the Yeti 75, the Blue 110, the Bison 125 and Grizzly 165. And the lowest temperature, again, the Yeti 75 at 32.3 degrees and the Pelican 80 coming in second place at 32.5. All right, now day seven hit 91.1 degrees. So holding right in that 90 degree temperature, which is fantastic for this cooler review. We had three more coolers go above that 40 degree mark. Those being the Arctic 65, the Blue 60, and the Pelican 65. We had four more completely melt out as well. Surprising that Arctic 65 melted, it went to 40 degrees and melted in the same day. The Blue 60, same thing, went to 40 degrees and melted in the same day. The Bison 75 and the Pelican 65 also melted out today, even though they had tapped out the day before. Now we have six still left in the running that have not gone above 40 degrees, two readings in a row which is pretty incredible going into day seven now. Those coolers are the Yeti 75, the Pelican 80, the Blue 110, the Bison 125, the Orca 140, and the Grizzly 165. The lowest temperature we saw again, the Yeti 75 at 33.2 degrees and the Pelican 80 came in second at 33.4 degrees. Day number eight here saw a little bit of a warm up. We went to 94.2 degrees in the tent and we had two more coolers that went above that 40 degree mark. Those being the Yeti 75 and the Pelican 80, both surprised there because they've been doing so well. 
they also surprisingly melted entirely. So they both hit above that 40 degree and melted on the same temperature reading. Really interesting. The Oron 65 also melted out entirely. So that one is now above that, that, uh, that benchmark. We have four left in the review that are under that 40 degree mark and in the review entirely. Those being the Blue 110, the Bison 125, the Orca 140, and the Grizzly 165. The lowest temperature we saw recorded was a tie between the Blue 110 and the Bison 125 at 35.2 degrees, and the Orca 140 and the Grizzly 165 both tied for the second lowest at 36.1. Day number nine, we had a bit of a cool down. It really had a cold snap here and it only got to 78.2 degrees in the tent. That being said, we still had of the four remaining coolers here that were still in the game, all four of them tapped out and all the four of them melted here on day nine. The blue 110 went eight days. The Orca 140 went 8.25 days and the Bison 125 and Grizzly 165 both went eight and a half days below that 40 degree mark and all of them again melted on this day nine. So obviously we have a tie between the Bison 125 and the Grizzly 165. They both went eight and a half days holding below that 40 degree temperature. So how we did the tiebreaker here, we tracked all of the internal temperatures throughout that eight and a half days and took the lowest average temperature throughout that eight and a half days. So our winner based on that and based on the tiebreaker is the Bison 125. It held an average temperature of 35.8 degrees for eight and a half days. And the Grizzly was just above that. And the Bison also had a lower average temperature swing inside throughout that eight and a half days, further confirming that, that finding as well. So um, one other thing, the Grizzly 165 also went over the 40 degree mark, just a, a touch, just 40.1, 40.2 kind of thing throughout the week once or twice. So all of those factors led us to giving the Bison 125 the victory in the 40 degree benchmark. Now breaking it down by size category, if you're interested in a particular size of cooler, we went ahead and did that for you here. The 50 to 65 quart category saw the blue 60 lead the way at six and a half days below the 40 degree mark. And then the Pelican 65 and the Arctic 65 tied for that second place at six and a quarter days. Jump into the 75 to 80 quart category, we saw the Pelican 80 quart and the Yeti 75 tie for the top spot at seven days under the 40 degree mark. And the Bison 75 and the Orca 80 tie for the second spot at five and a half days. In the 110 to 165 quart category, we saw the Bison 125 and the Grizzly 165 tie for the top spot. And as we just mentioned, the tiebreaker went to the Bison 125 there. And the, the third spot went to the Orca 140 at eight and a quarter days. Now, a few things that we thought were interesting that we took away from doing this review, one of those being that the large size coolers tended to do better overall. You can see that in all the charts and the graphs that we've got, but it was really interesting because that's not something that we predicted would happen. Uh, very, very interesting there. The other thing is that it doesn't necessarily matter if there's ice in the cooler. That is not necessarily uh, going to depict whether or not that temperature inside the air temperature inside the cooler is below that 40 degree mark where you want to stay for safe storage of meat. So that was really important. It was about a 50 50 split. Half the cooler stayed below that 40 degree mark until they melted and the other ones went above the 40 degree mark while they still had ice. So that was pretty interesting as well. As you would imagine, ultralight coolers didn't do as well in their thermal retention. They had more temperature instability inside the, the cooler as well, but you kind of expect that with an ultralight cooler. That's what one of the things you're giving up when you go with an ultralight, ultralight cooler. Now, something that we could have done differently here, looking back at this review, is we could have put two thermometers in each cooler, so you have an extra verification of that temperature reading. Uh, something that we would have done differently if we were to go ahead and do this again. But nonetheless, we did account for that in getting two readings in a row above that benchmark before we took a cooler out of the review. So there you go, 16 premium coolers tested to find that 40 degree benchmark. It was a lot of interesting details and we learned a lot doing this review. Thanks for watching here today. And again, I will put links to all these coolers down in the description for you so you can check them out for yourself. Don't forget to go check out the website. There's a ton of data over there, a lot more than we can cover here in the video. Website is backwoodspursuit.com. That article and review is gonna be over there. 
Like and subscribe to this video. Share it with your friends if you thought it was interesting. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.